Hi, welcome to a video regarding the SAT math section. And here we're going to talk about scatter plots. A scatter plot is basically when you're comparing two sets of data and looking for some sort of connection between them. Um, you'll choose one thing to be the x, one thing to be the y, plot the points, and the points will be scattered. You may not necessarily fall on a line, but sometimes we try to draw a line through our points to get the equation of the best fit line. Uh, so that's something that we tend to see with these. And we'll see some examples that involve scatter plots, sometimes looking at weight and height, or um, you know, maybe you know, one's GPA and income after college. Um, you, know, you can get some kind of some interesting um, connections here when you do um, a scatter plot. Uh, <clears throat> growth and decay. Uh, we will talk about um, some models that deal with that, like when something's growing or decaying. And, We'll talk about linear quadratic exponential models, and then um, maybe even using a calculator to model your data. So let's start with um, maybe number two, because that's kind of a great way to just have a discussion about scatter plots. So here we have four different scatter plots, <clears throat> and they're asking which one would be modeled by a quadratic function in which the x term is a negative coefficient. Hopefully you would know that if you graph the y squared, it will look like this. It can also be shifted around. You know, that might be out of x squared plus 4x plus 5. I'm just going to make this up. I don't know if that, that works. But uh, <clears throat> that's obviously linear for part A, so that's out. That's exponential decay. For C, so that's out. This one's quadratic, but it's a positive coefficient. It's kind of more like that. With some junk connected to it. But this one's probably going to be what we're looking for. So it's going to be D for that one. So it is good to be able to recognize what's linear, what's an exponential, and what's quadratic. And of course, when you change the leading coefficients, how that alters the graph too. Uh, Let's talk about something with the best fit line interpretation, like number seven. Okay, so here, a scatter plot is going into hours and number of emails sent per day. So the figure above shows number of emails sent per day, plot gets number of hours and adult works on a computer per day. So I guess the more you work on a computer, the more emails you may be sent. I don't know. Or maybe just on the computer, just browsing stuff, who knows? But um, we do see some sort of correlation here that, you know, the longer you spend on the computer, the more emails you send per day. Um, and which of the following best estimates the average rate of change in the number of emails sent compared to the number of hours worked? Really what this represents is slope, if you think about it, because you're looking at the change in Y or a change in F. You are dealing with a change, and you want something that's a bit average, you know, kind of a general way of looking at it. So... We could probably take some data points here, like one comma twenty looks like that's a data point, and maybe eight comma eighty, perhaps. So you find the slope that'd be eighty minus twenty over eight minus one, It'd be sixty over seven, which is kind of close to eight or nine. So C would look like that would be a good choice. <clears throat> so you send about eight to nine emails per hour. So that's uh, one way our plots can be tested. And let's look at maybe a tougher problem. Let's take a look at 13 and 14 here. So we're looking at average hourly water intake in ounces and age. So I guess the older you are, maybe the more water you intake, but we do see it's kind of random here. So it looks like there are five five-year-olds that were surveyed, uh, also five six-year-olds and so forth. And they do say dietitians working in children's ward, hospitals monitoring the water intake of all the patients in the ward, full water intake for each patient recorded throughout the day and then average over a 24-hour period. 
The results for corn scrapper, where each dot represents the average hourly water intake for one child. So which of the following has the greatest range? Range, remember, is high minus low, or max minus min. So if you want to find the lowest, so the greatest range, uh, we look at age five, that's going to be 0.9 and 1.7, so it's about 0.8. It's like one and 1.8, so that's also 0.8. So those are both the same, so that's probably not going to be good for us. So at age eight, 0.9, 1 1.8, so that's 0.9, so that's a little bit wider. Age 11, 1 and 2, that's even wider. So definitely it's going to be age 11. That's the greatest range. A child between ages of 5 and 8 should consume at least 1 liter of water per day. Based on the data presented in the scatter plot, which, what percent of the children ages 5 through 8 in the war consume less than a daily recommended amount? <clears throat> so obviously there's 20 kids we're looking at. And I'm going to erase some of the stuff here. So you want to be um, consuming at least one liter of water, maybe five through eight. So clearly there are three kids who don't do that, but everyone else does. And it just looks at like five dots per age. So that'd be um, 17 out of 20, which is 0.85 or 85%. So that covers um, scatter plots.